Hallelujah, 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 glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody out there. This uh, beautiful Friday, amen. This is uh, the 9th of October 2020. I hear many people saying how terrible the year has been, amen. And yeah, it has been challenging, but I tell you something God has been God in every situation. God has been God in every minute and moment of this 2020. And all the issues going on out there, do you think he's unaware of it? Good morning, Miss Lorna. <clears throat> Good to see you on with us this morning. Amen. And all of you that's on, my God. Um, wonderful. It's healing rooms this morning. Amen. Or healing room. It's one room. <laughs> Amen. You know, many years ago, when I first came to Jamaica, the Lord prompted me to begin a healing ministry um, here, you know, for people. And uh, it turned out that um, I tell you something, you want to get yourself in trouble? <laughs> hey, start to tell people they can be healed and begin to pray for them and see results. My God, they'll come from everywhere. But the issues that begin to confront you, my God. So anyway, I came over to St. Mary and started again. Amen. <clears throat> and started uh, um, the prayer and healing center. Whoa. You know, talk about tomato problems, amen. But guess what? Um, the Lord prevails in all things, amen. And if we are diligent, he will walk with us through all the trials and the troubles. You know, uh, one, one of my friends over here asked me one day, he said, how come you keep doing what you do even if it doesn't seem like anybody is with you? Because, you see, physically, there might not be someone standing next to me. <clears throat> but there's always the Christ. And then uh, the Spirit of God said to me, um, about four years ago, uh, I was telling some people about this. Gail was one of them that started, you know, early with us. Um, the Lord said to me, the people have rejected the ministry that I've sent to them. And so begin to broadcast, amen, begin to put it online, and uh, that was four years ago, amen, and now we have morning prayer live, and we have Sunday online, my God, Sunday live, my Lord, the God, the God of our life, I, he, he knows ahead of time, the Bible says he knows the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, things not yet done. Um, I want to play a song this morning. Well, you know what I'm going to do before I play the song. I have a, a short video. It's around eight minutes or so. I want to play it. Um, and it has to do, I, I probably won't go through the whole video, <clears throat> but I want you to see something this morning before I get into praying for healing. Amen. And so let us, um, and we have a lot, I mean, I got a list of prayer requests from last evening. So why don't you just sit back and watch um, a portion of this nine minute video. It's probably about three minutes. We will see that part of it and then uh, we'll come right back. Amen. God bless you. Ah, glory to God. I'm Bishop Winston Watson coming to you live uh, and direct from St. Mary on this beautiful island of Jamaica. Here we go. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. My God. You have heard that it hath been Thank said, you, an Jesus. eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. Thank you. 
son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, and take up thy bed and walk? But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. I say unto thee, arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, I want you to think about that for a moment, my friends. I want you to realize that the Lord Jesus Christ, you, did you see what just happened? Did you see what just happened? Some men brought their friend, actually four friends, brought their friend to Jesus. And when they brought their friend to Jesus, they let him down. <laughs> they tore open the man's roof and they let the man down into, they let the man down into the, 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 the house and Jesus <clears throat> Jesus made a statement. He said he mar marveled at their faith. Now, he saw their faith. They pushed past everybody. Are you willing this morning to push past everybody? <laughs> hey, woo! Are you willing this morning to push past everything? Amen? Um, and uh, to, really, to really grab a hold like a pit bull of your prayer miracle this morning. Amen? Your healing miracle. Many people, you know, they believe it's my prayer that causes a healing. Yes, that's a part of it. <clears throat> but it is also, Jesus said to just about everyone that came to him, go your way, your faith hath made you whole. Ha, <laughs> ha, did you read that? I mean, listen to what he said. When they came to him, and I, in this same video that I, I didn't finish, but I'll share it, you know, over the next few weeks. This same video points out, like, you know, the different ones that would come. And he made that statement clearly. Your faith had made you whole. Let me just quickly run down some of the prayer requests here. <clears throat> Number one, we have Simone. We have Simone in, in the USA. And I want you to pray ahead. You're going to be praying together with me. Many years ago, when I, um, <laughs> when I was you know, new to a lot of this stuff. Uh, I used to participate in the Benny Hinn um, crusade events. And I, I remember one day I was praying um, and I was watching, you know, I was obviously we are looking at what Benny Hinn was doing and so on. And the Spirit of God says, observe and participate. Now, I was not on the platform. <clears throat> I was in the audience or down where the audience was, but I'm observing and I am praying. So somebody comes up and I don't know what's wrong with him. So I start to pray in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And I start to pray for deliverance and answers. And I mean, some dramatic things began to happen. Are you ready this morning? Um, because when I stood where I was, and then eventually what I did, whenever I would be, you know, watching him on television, I would ahead 
pray ahead and pray for the particular people I would see coming on the platform. You may not think that is an important thing to do, but you're praying ahead. You're, you are, uh, you're working in the Spirit of God. So although it happened a few weeks before, maybe sometimes a few months before, you, in your prayer, God has credited to what Benny Hinn was doing on that platform. Amen? And so, anyway, <clears throat> so I'm praying an, an anointing several times an anointing a presence of God a powerful and awesome presence of God came in the room and whenever I would go out to minister whenever I would go into a church um, if I'd be in a store and I would be getting ready to minister or serve somebody in the Lord you know with ministry time um, that's that anointing would come down because I began to mix my anointing with someone else that was that was what that was given that particular gifting amen and so we have Simone that is having <clears throat> an issue with COVID in the USA and we are continuing to pray for her amen and uh, believing that God will raise her up we have Ava um, uh, who had brain surgery and is recuperating we have Ava Grace, amen? <clears throat> and uh, I want you to also, this morning, not just pray for Ava Grace, but pray. Um, I saw a note after um, Gail brought it to my attention, but I was in Oterius, and as I was driving, Ava Grace's mom, Amber, I think her name is Amber, came to my mind, and I started to think about her. And... and uh, and then in general, I started to think about people that were faced with the issues of having a child with a terminal, what the doctors say is a terminal illness. <clears throat> and I started to think about it, and I wonder how they deal with that. How you deal with that day after day after day after day, pushing in. And, uh, and you realize, like the, these four friends, they didn't give up. Amen? And she has not given up. But how did they deal with it? And then later on, she put up a post. <laughs> the same day, she put up a post. And, uh, you know, she was talking about how it is a life-changing experience. So pray for the heart, the mind, the peace, <clears throat> the shalom peace of God for Amber, Ava Grace's mom, and for Ava Grace. You know, we use the term Ava Strong. Well, we also have to think about Amber Strong, amen, <laughs> glory to God, because she is the strength of her daughter. She is the faith over her, her child right now, and we are not around that child 24-7, but she is, amen. And then we have Holly. <clears throat> I think Holly is in South Carolina. I'm not exactly sure where in the U.S. Uh, Holly is. And then we have Elise right here in Jamaica, down there in the Tower Isle area just outside of um, uh, Ocho Rios. We have Big Don with the pains in his legs. I haven't had a recent report on that. Um, if if, if her, uh, his wife is on, she can say how he's doing with that. <clears throat> then we have Myro, we have Noel, we have Phyllis, we have Karen with her eyes, amen. We have um, a pastor <clears throat> that was in my pastor's class with me. I was a student and along with him. He and his wife, actually, <laughs> were students in the class. Um, and so we were at seminary together. Pastor Darren Whitfield, you know, has been, he, he was in ICU and he had been moved out of the ICU. He's going to another hospital now. Um, they're talking some upper GI and all kinds of stuff that I don't have a clue. But I know that God knows what's going on and God has the answer. <clears throat> and then I want us to also um, recognize a couple of requests. And we'll go through these, you know, individually or in a group later and we'll pray over them. But Jennifer has a request here. Um, Annie has a request Annie, I don't know if you know this. You probably don't know this, but um, Demontre, um, just about every week, Demontre comes to my mind. <laughs> I don't know him. 
Um, but just about every week, that young man comes to my mind. <clears throat> and, you know, we lift him up in prayer. Since the first day you mentioned him to us. Amen. And so, I mean, don't, 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 don't ever think that we are forgetting Demontre. Um, that's Annie's grandson, I believe. Amen. And, and so, Annie, we are with you and believing God with you for Demontre's healing. Amen. And then we have Rona, who is asking for her son, prayer for her son, Paul. I think he is in the U.S. also. <clears throat> but Rona is here in Jamaica. We have Dale, a pastor here, that's asking prayer for her and her husband. Amen. And uh, Dale, <laughs> I met uh, maybe about uh, maybe 15 years ago over on the Kingston side, a wonderful um, person in, in Christ. <clears throat> then we have Olivine asking for prayer for her granddaughter. Amen and her family in general, but in prayer for her granddaughter. And then we have Bridget. Now, I want to mention Bridget because Bridget um, <laughs> was in a group that decided, they didn't know anybody in Jamaica, so they decided to get online <clears throat> and find somebody. So God connected us. And she and a bunch of radical Christians, <laughs> a radical bunch of Christians, uh, with their long hair and <clears throat> Holy Ghost power came to Jamaica. Amen. We went into the square in Port Maria. I people talk. People have talked about them <laughs> positively, and because they said, "How can people with tattoos pray with people?" <laughs> God is in people with tattoos too. Hey, my God, Hallelujah! If you don't know, you know um, look at Stephanie one day and see my, my dear Stephanie, my God, powerful woman of God, Amen. And uh, so they were complaining, "How can people with tattoos with tattoos?" to pray for people. How can, um, and by the way, these people that are complaining are ministers. How can that one, you know, with long hair and, you know, ponytail, by the way, they're talking about a man with a ponytail, pray for somebody. But let me tell you something. God is not limited to you and what you think. Hey, woo, glory to God. <clears throat> God's not limited to our little box. Amen. Because I saw young men that were in that group walk over to a man that no minister dared to walk over to. No evangelist dared, I'm talking about somebody in Port Maria, right here in St. Mary, no evangelist, no minister dared to walk over to the point where some of the Jamaican kids that were standing around me said to me, Pastor, how come... They can do that, and we can't. My God, they walked over to a man that was of unsound mind. In Jamaica, they say he's a madman. I mean, his pants was falling off. He had no shirt on. He was acting up somewhat. <clears throat> and these guys walked over to him, laid hands on him, and prayed a Holy Ghost prayer. My God, and it just so shocked everybody. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Um, and so Bridget was in that group. And, uh, you know, uh, we have kept in touch all these years, and it's really a blessing to know her. But her husband has a golf ball size growth in the side of his neck. And right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, ha, ha, ha. I don't know if you've seen some of the old-time evangelists and healing ministers, but they would reach out <laughs> and they would grab a hold of that cyst. They would grab a hold of that thing and it would fall right off in their hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I reach out right now, Father, uh, into, into Richie's life, Lord God, <clears throat> my God. I reach out right now into Rich's life, Lord God, right around his neck, Lord God. And I pull out, Lord God, hey, that growth. My God, my God, I pull out that growth. 
Yay, I pull out that growth. They have seen mighty miracles themselves. But Father God, this morning, uh, as you all agree with me, we pull out uh, uh, that growth right now in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we are, we are asking, uh, Kenny is asking for prayer this morning for nagging sinusitis. My God, thank you, Lord Jesus, for Kenny. I can pray ahead now. <clears throat> because I have, over time, a little bit of an issue with that. And I tell you, God is a deliverer. I used to be sick in the bed, can't move, until one day I heard a man, a minister, get up and say how he used to be sick, and he used to have this, and he used to have that with allergies. And I had to go to the allergies. They had to stick my back and figure out what I was allergic to and give me meds and give me this and give me that. And eventually, all of that seriousness of my, my sinusitis or allergy, whatever they call it, um, went away. Now we have some symptoms here and there, but it's very mild comparatively speaking to what used to happen. Amen. But it's all because of the blessing of God. I want us um, to enjoy um, a worship song here as we get ready to pray. Just get us get ourselves in an attitude of prayer this morning. You know, I've been up. I've been up since three o'clock this morning working on this program. My God, I didn't know I was two minutes late getting on. I didn't know where the time went, but I've been up working on the program, putting the script together, and making sure that all things, you know, would be set and ready this morning. I want you to listen to this song. You've heard it before, um, and uh, you know this song is uh, about a little boy that was getting ready to die. Amen? There's a brief testimony in front of it, but I want you to listen to it because it begins to develop faith in us. Amen? Glory to God. Glory to this God. This year, it's as a Bethel, a Bethel Music family, a few my days God, before Christmas, my God, most my of you God, guys my probably God. were a part of this miracle, but we watched um, Joel and Janie Taylor's little son, Jackson, and he was... A few days before Christmas, airlifted to intensive care, and we begin to fight for Jackson's life. How many of you guys joined in that fight and that symphony of prayer that rose up for a little boy? And a couple, couple weeks into the fight, we got a text one night from Joel that they weren't sure if he was going to make it through the night. And as soon as I heard and read the message, it was like, this giant of unbelief stood in front of me. And I just, I just thought, Jackson's going to die tonight. We're not going to see the miracle. And as this giant stood in front of me, all of a sudden, out of my gut, this song started coming out right in the face of the giant. I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. As that giant was looking at us, I knew he was going to regret the day he ever pointed his sword at Jackson. Just as Goliath pointed his sword at David, the sword Goliath pointed at David became the sword the little boy picked up and took the giant's head off with. And as we watched this miracle happen in Jackson's body, it was like this giant of unbelief was falling. And our community just began to sing this song. It was just one note in the symphony of prayer rising for his life. So I want to teach it to you this morning. Let's sing. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah.
This year, as a, a Bethel Music family, a few days before Christmas, most of you guys probably were a part of this miracle, but we watched um, Joel and Janie Taylor's little I want you to know that God is able to deal with the issue this morning, that there is nothing that God can't do, that there is nothing that God can't touch. This little child, and I know that there was a gap in the volume there for a minute, I want you to know. but you know that God is able to address all the situations that confront us. This kid was about to die. His mother and father said, called the church and said that, guess what? It is not, it, it, tonight is the last night. It's likely that he won't live past tonight. Amen. It's likely that tomorrow morning the child would, will die. And this young man, as he is singing with us here right now, this young man, as he's singing, he says, immediately something comes, a wall of unbelief, and then the Spirit of God raises a standard against the devil. Amen? Against the unbelief. Praise God. Hallelujah. We continue with the song. Glory to God. 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 This yes, year, as Lord a, Jesus. A Bethel Music family, a few days. Yes, Lord Jesus. In the presence yes, of my Lord enemies. Jesus. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah.
We serve a God of miracles this morning. We serve a God that's mighty. <clears throat> we serve a God that wants to sh just make sure you know that there is an answer for you. Amen. We serve a God that loves you and cares for you. We serve a God that wants to strengthen you. My God, this morning, Father, we lift up all those, Lord God. <clears throat> I don't think... Well, Father, I just want to thank you this morning for Travis, my God. Travis in Ohio, my God. Hey, Lord God, I don't know the, the, the symptoms of the thing that he, Father God, has lived with all of his young life. <clears throat> I don't know the medical details. I don't know the emotional challenges, Lord God. I don't know. Father, what goes on in him from a personal basis. I've never met him personally, but Father, I've met his mom. I hear her heart. Oh, Lord God. I think, I think I've met his dad online. <laughs> Amen. I've met his brother, Father God. And this morning I lift up that household of faith in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for Papa, Lord God, that's healed from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. I thank you, Father, for Father God, Travis, Lord God, that functions well, Lord God, that relates to his world well. Father, I thank you for the faith of God in that household and in the household this morning. Father God, with Amber and Ava Grace, Lord God, 
And anyone that is watching any, Lord God, with the mantra, Lord God, anyone that's watching that has a child or a grandchild, the Father, that they are concerned about this morning, that they've been believing about this morning, Father, I just thank you, God, that you bless them, Lord God. You keep them, Lord God. You magnify yourself, Lord God, in their household this morning, Father. You strengthen their faith, Lord God. You let the mighty gift of faith, Father, begin to work in their lives today, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray, Lord God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. My friends, there's a word in the book of Isaiah <clears throat> in the 53rd chapter, in the first, the third, the fourth, and the fifth verses. Take a look at it with me. It's on your screen. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1 says, Who has believed our report? You know, you might tell somebody that God is healing you. My God, you're not waiting for healing. I see people say that all the time. They're waiting for God to do something. They're waiting for healing to come, but healing is here. Um, the scripture says in Mark chapter 11, what things so, soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them. Not that you're going to receive them. Believe you receive them, and then you shall have them. <clears throat> Who has believed our report? People might not say it, but you can see it on their faces. When you talk about God being a healer, when you begin to say things that uh, are examples of the faith you have in Christ, they say, well, who, what kind of report is that? But who has believed your report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He is, that is Jesus Christ, verse 3, is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He has our grief and our sorrows, sorrows meaning sicknesses and our diseases. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Verse 4 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. We said, that he deserved it. <clears throat> we said he needed to go to the cross. We called him a sinner. But <laughs> the last verse says it all. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his tribes, <clears throat> not that, now look at the verse, not that we are going to be healed, but there's healing, there's healing power falling on you right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that mighty name, that name, Lord God, at which every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. Father, I speak, uh, Lord God, to the sinus problem in Kenny this morning. Father God, I speak to Karen's eyes. I speak to Don and his legs, Lord God. I speak, Lord God, to Pastor Darren Whitfield, Lord God, and his physical body. My God, Rona's son Paul, who I think was in the accident, Lord God, a few years ago. I speak to his recovery and his restoration. Father God, I speak, Lord God, to Sister Olive's, Sister Olivine's granddaughter, for the peace of God and the protecting power, a shield of God that surrounds her and keeps her. I speak to Richie this morning, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, as I said, I speak to the issue that Kenny, Father God, has petitioned us with this morning. Lord God, have your way. Have your way, Lord God. Let healing arise. Let healing arise. Let healing arise, Lord God. Ha ha, shade of Rabo Shanda Rababa said it yokes. Rebe si kundolobo Shanda Rababa said it yokes kundolobo. Father God, let healing arise this morning. 
Let healing arise this morning. We truly raise a hallelujah, which is a thank you for it already done. <laughs> <Woo! clears throat> which is a thank you, my God, when the doctor said that little child in the hospital was not going to live into the next day. A hallelujah was raised, mighty God. Woo! Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. A hallelujah was raised. Father, we lay hands on ourselves right now. Oh my God, my God. We lay hands on ourselves, Father. We lay hands on ourselves, Lord God. And we thank you, Jesus, that all things in our bodies work together for good. We thank you for our heart, Father God, beating in the rhythm, Lord God of heaven. We thank you, Lord God, for our blood vessels, Lord God, right side of our heart, left side, every Father God, a rabasam portion of our heart, Lord God, and the blood that flows, flows normally, Father, without obstruction. We thank you for our brain, Lord God, and the function of the vessels in our brain. We thank you for our liver, Lord God. We thank you for every organ in our bodies, Father, functioning rightly according to the prophetic word of God. Be healed and be whole. Mighty God, we appreciate you this morning. Mighty God, we thank you this morning. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Mighty God, we have, we have a few minutes left in this morning's program, and I want to introduce you to someone. You're kind of learning some of the things that I do in my healing services you know, behind the scenes now, you're seeing it up front. But I'm, I, these are the things that I do before I even get into a service. I saturate myself with the word. I saturate myself, you know, in worship. And one of the men over the years that I've used, he's not very popular these days, <clears throat> Maurice Scalar, S-K-L-A-R, Maurice, M-A-U-R-I-C-E, S-K-L-A-R. He plays a violin. But let me point something out. When Maurice plays, an anointing comes. My God. <laughs> Woo! <clears throat> and when he plays, and then at the end of his video, he's going to pray. Amen? And I want you to hang in there and listen. Because this morning, it's not just Pastor Watson. It's the body of Christ that has come together. It's all of you out there that's watching this morning, that's in agreement this morning. You are going to allow the Spirit of God to touch people across the world. Touch your life, yes, but to touch so many others across the world. Let's uh, take a moment and let's uh, now uh, enjoy the ministry of Maurice Scalar. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Lift your hands right now. Just lift your hands to the Holy Spirit, to the Lord. And we'll just ask the Holy Spirit to come right now and touch us. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in our midst. We thank you. You're here to touch us. You're here to change us. We want to meet with the Lord. We want to meet with you, Lord. We can't change ourselves. We ask you to change us. Lift the veils from our eyes. Let us see Jesus. Let us see you as you really are, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch every person and heal those that need healing this morning. In your precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is touching people. Yes, yes, Lord. The Lord is touching people with problems in your eyes right now. If you've had difficulty seeing or double vision or migraine headaches around the eyes or sinus trouble in, the, in, the, in, in that region, dif, dif, just, I, I just, the Lord is just touching you right now. Problems with the inner ear, vertigo, balance problems. The Lord is touching you right now. Just receive from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Someone with a, a cataract problem, God, is, God is, is, is removing that from you right now. A retina that's been detached. I don't know why I'm getting things about the eyes right now, but just receive. If you need healing in your eyes, eyes see in Jesus' name. Uh, backs and knees are being healed. and. Uh, Problems in the feet, problems with the uh, digestion, problems with allergies. Uh, there's yes, there's someone in here with a blood uh, problem, a problem in the blood, a chemical imbalance. Also, someone with the leukemia. There's also someone in the hospital that you've uh, been praying for with cancer. Uh, God is is moving into that room right now. Those of you with with problems with uh, uh, depression and and uh, you're on medicine, a bipolar condition. God is touching you right now. Uh, he's bringing wholeness to you. Schizophrenia, problems with the breathing. Well, it's tremendous. There's a flow of healing right now. So just reach out and receive. Thank you, Lord. Yes, a hand that cannot close. God is healing that right now. Praise the Lord. other church there's someone that has been ex you came to church this morning and uh, where's the camera for is it you've been uh, dealing with uh, thoughts of suicide you said if, if I don't get help this morning I'm going to kill myself and I'm telling you right now the Lord is coming to you and he's telling you you're going to live and not die and you're receiving the help that you need right now go free You need yes. Right yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. My friends, this morning, I know that God has been at work. I know that Maurice has talked about some things that are important this morning. And I thank God for what has transpired. I know that the Lord is moving in all of our lives. And I want you to find a church if you are able to go to church this weekend. Get online, join us if you can. Amen. Enjoy the presence of God and the healing power of the Most High. Amen. All of your bodies. You heard what Maurice said. As a matter of fact, I did not, I hadn't played the entire thing. I have had it, but I didn't, I tested it this morning, but maybe just a few seconds of it online. But I did not remember that he spoke about those things. And those are some of the very things that were on our prayer list. Amen. And so I thank God for the Spirit of God that is at work in us and at work through us. You are. You are the only healer that some people will see. You know, we talk about praying for people to be healed, but you are the one that prays. You're the one that lays hands on the sick. You're the one that God is asking to go visit, and you're the one that God is asking 
to phone, send a phone call, send a text, do something this morning that will make a difference in someone's life. And over this week,